In this video, we'll work in Adobe InDesign. We're going to take a look at when we design for devices and how we can go about creating an interactive card. Let's get started. We come to Adobe InDesign and we want to start by setting up our workspace. So we can come to File, New, and we're going to choose a document. We get this window, our opening new document window, and let's go to the web. We are designing for the web. We'll see as we start that we get a bunch of different presets. We can also take a look at mobile and we can see that we have some of devices, some recent devices up here as well. I'm going to come to web and I'm going to set my workspace to 800 by 600 pixels. When we are designing for a device, for a computer, a monitor, a, um, a phone, an iPad, uh, we want to make sure that we're working in pixels. We can think that 72 pixels makes an inch. I'm going to um, keep my margins as they are. I can see I still get a bunch of these different options of how many pages would I like, how many columns. Again, really you can choose what you would like for this to look like. And I am going to hit create. And I have my workspace. Great. Now I'm going to start to work. And when I come on up to my workspace, I could also change my workspace to digital publishing and I'll see what I, what happens, what loads, and I'll open and close things for us as well. So I'm going to begin and I'm going to open up my layers and see what I have. I am going to make a Valentine's card. So I'm going to begin first and this will be my page. It's going to be a one page document. If I open up one more time, I can take a look at my pages. Now you might think if I was doing an interactive piece on the web, would I want to have multiple pages? And the answer would be yes. What you could do is you could link them or you could make it with a changing the pages as well. So I come to this screen. I'm going to begin by setting a background color. So I'm going to come to my toolbar and I'm going to choose my shape. I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm going to run it to cover my workspace. And if it runs off the edge a little bit, that's okay. Anything that is over the edge won't show. And you'd rather almost have it over the edge, especially if it's a background because if it's not 100% to the edge, then it will show a sliver of white. Now I'm going to come on in and I'm going to choose a color. I am making an interactive Valentine's Day card, so I'm going to stick into this pink color. And I wanna make sure that I turn off the stroke. Sometimes it's easy by accident to have the stroke turned on. In order to turn the stroke off, come up to the control panel above. If you do not see this, you want to come to window and make sure that control is turned on. Window control. And you can come to the stroke and make sure that it is turned off. Now I have my background color. I am going to lock this layer and I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to start to add my type. I'm going to grab my T for type and I'm going to put my first line and I am going to type happy. I'm going to choose the font that I want to work with. Again, what can be overwhelming about Adobe InDesign is there are many ways to do the same thing. I can come back up to my control panel and I can take a look and choose a different font. I'm going to stick with Bungie right here. I can start to make it larger. Again, I'm going to make this interactive and make it as big as it will go. Now I might end up changing the size of it too as I add my other font as well. I'm going to resize my text box. Whenever I see this red plus sign, in the text box, it's overset text, it's not fitting in the box. Make the box a little bit bigger. I have my first word. I want to change the color of my type. I'm going to grab my T for type 
and select my type. And again, I can come back up to the control panel above. And again, there's many ways to do the same thing. Let me show you another way to access this. I can go to window. I can come down to types, type and tables. I can choose my character window. Now from my character window, I'm not gonna be able to change the color here, but I wanted you to see this. You could change the font and the size. This is a really good one. We'll look at this a little bit more as well. I can change my T for type and my tools. I can change the color and come on in. I'm gonna stick in the reds here and hit okay. I've officially changed the color of my font. I am going to separate my next few lines into separate text box so I can animate them separately. I begin with happy. I'm going to copy and paste happy and add my other type. I come to edit, copy, edit, paste. This one will say happy day before. As I need to resize my text box, I will. Happy day before. My next box is going to say half price. Edit, copy, edit, paste. This box will say half price. If I'd like to, I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to center it. Center this inside of the text box. I could also, if I'd like to, change the font. And in order to do that, again, selecting it and coming over to my character window or up to the control frame. And maybe I could play around with a script font if I'd like to. So many options with font. Let's go for Cortado. And again, when I change the font, I can also start to resize. Happy day before half price. I'm going to copy and paste this line right here. This text box, again, edit, copy, edit, paste. And here I'm going to type candy sale. We'll give that one three exclamation points. And maybe I want to add an image as well. In order to do that, I have my image. You could play around with, you know, how things are placed on the page. Spending a lot of time doing different kinds of things. I'm going to take my image for, uh, for to add an image. I'm going to select my box with the X through it and I'm going to place my image. I have an image that I downloaded and it is of a heart. I'm going to hit OK. Again, I'm going to come to my fitting. I come to object fitting, fill frame proportionally. Excellent. Now I'm going to come in and work with my animation window. I go to window and I choose interactive. As I come to my interactive window, I want to choose animation. I pull my animation window over. I can also come and open up my timing. I can play around with the timing. One more time under interactive timing. Here is my timing window. I begin, I start with the word happy. And I can see I can choose all these ones. I'm going to say a fade in. I can watch it. I can come to the bottom of the animation window and see so my preview. Happy, there it is. One more time, make this window bigger. Happy, it's the only thing that is happening right now. So let me choose my next one. I'll come to day before. Again, I'm going to choose 
the same option. I'm going to have it fade in. Happy day before. Now I'm going to go to, let me watch it one more time just for fun. Happy day before. Excellent. I can click on to day before. And I am going to come to half price. Let's do this one a little bit differently. I can come on in and I am going to choose. How about if we fly in from the bottom half price? And then we'll do candy sale also flying in. I'm going to choose it to fly in from the bottom. Okay, let's watch the whole thing here. Happy day before half price candy sale. I've created an interactive asset. Now, what do we want to do with the heart? Maybe we'll have this one come in and we'll do, maybe we'll do a bunch of these ones. I'm gonna flip it over and I am going to choose to have this one. Let's think. We'll have it pulse. Why not? Let's watch our whole interaction one more time. There we have it. We end with the heart. Now, I want to take a look at how we export this next. And I could come in and play with my timing as well. So I could choose a delay so I can see when I come to timing that I have all of these different options for my what I've put together here. So I have the heart icon and, you know, I could delay that one from happening. Um, so you, know, you could say add a second if things are too fast, 0.25 tenths of a second. Uh, we can see that, uh, you know, on page load, everything's happening and we can see the order of things as well. Okay, let's just watch one more time. I did add, it's funny sometimes how 0.25 tenths of a second can seem like a long time, but you can play around with that to get the idea. When we have everything where we'd like it to be, now we can save it. And when we save it, we're going to come to file and we are going to choose export and I'm going to give it a name and I already named it, there it is right there, Valentine card. And I'm going to do an EPUB fixed layout. You can see you have a bunch of different options here. We want it to be interactive. You could also do an interactive PDF, but if you wanted it to render on someone's device, um, I would go for EPUB, especially for something like this. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to replace mine. And you're gonna see that you have these different windows we're going to leave these as they are, but you can see that you have some options for CSS, for JavaScript, and attaching other files. So there's quite a bit that you can do as you're working inside of Adobe InDesign. And I'm going to choose OK. And I can see that I have my card. Happy day before half price candy sale. There we have a quick overview of creating an interactive card in Adobe InDesign.